California carnivores. We've been getting a lot of requests to take a look at our famous ping tank and see what it's looking like now. So Danielle and I are finally living up to that. Uh, as you can see, it's gotten even more full than ever. One of the things I've talked about a lot, because we would get people, especially when we were open to the public, that would come into the nursery all the time with ideas about being doing big, giant, planted tanks like this. And I'm always, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic with projects like this. So one of the things that I've learned over the years is whenever you do something like this, it's going to have to be redone every few years. And although it's looking really fantastic right now, you can see it's getting really, really full. And we're probably creeping up on that time when we'll have to come in here pretty soon and redo all this and clean it all out and thin it out a little bit. Inevitably, what, what happens is uh, some giant things like these big Mornensis over here, they're really starting to overshadow. You know, if this was a bog garden outside, maybe your pork leaf sundies are drowning out your pygmy sundies or something like that. But in this case, some of these big Mornensis and Gigantea crosses are really creeping over and starting to cover up like these little Cyclosectas. These are Rotunda floras, which are such a beautiful little species. They never get bigger, much bigger than that. Um, but they're starting to get crowded. And so pretty soon here, we'll pull it all apart. We'll save all the plants, of course, and put it right back together. But in the meantime, let's check it all out. So yeah, so this is a Mornensis. I think it's Veracruz by A that I made years ago. Really, really bright pink and nice big red rosettes. Um, I pointed out this uh, cyclosecta stream here that kind of goes between the two rocks. And those are really pretty. They're just starting to come out of their um, dormant rosettes. So they're just starting to look purple. They'll look more purple soon. Over here on the rocks, I have a uh, condoi, which loves to grow that way. And then down lower on the rocks, those are all big Ellersay. If you've been buying any of our Ellersay online, that was one of the parent plants for all of our Ellersay. It's already a pretty big form, which is why the mighty mouse form that we ended up with is so huge. Really nice big rosettes, and they bloom all the time. They kind of have somewhat variable flower color, but these Ellersays are really pretty. I think these are just uh, pirouettes all pressed against the front. And this is a big giant Laoyana red. And you can see it blooms so much across all these old spent red flowers. They look like old firecrackers or something. But those are all the old Laoyana flowers. They press up against the glass. Um, what else do we have in here? This is a uh, species Sumidero by Morinensis. You can get really huge flowers when it gets going. This pale giant here. That's uh, Gigantea by Ellersay. You can really see that in the flower there. This clumper is Marginata by Hamavensis. We sell that cross a lot. It's a nice clumper. Very pale lavender flowers, the little yellow throw. This guy I perched on the rock above this cave here. I forget what that guy is. I think it's Coraceae by Moctezuma. I'm pretty sure. These rocks are called um, uh, Mexican fountain rock. That's where I get it. Let's call it the landscape places I get it at. You go to those places where they have gravel and giant piles of rocks and ask for Mexican fountain rock. And it has all these big uh, crevices and little tiny nooks and crannies. And if you stick some sphagnum moss in there, that's what I do is I jam a little uh, New Zealand sphagnum moss into one of those rocks. And then you can just tuck the pings in with some tweezers. And eventually they root in. Like this would probably be kind of hard to pull out. I mean, not super hard because pings don't have a lot of roots, but. They're pretty rooted in there. That's a really huge Gigantea. Um, it's Gigantea by Moctezuma. Whenever you cross anything with Gigantea, you end up with these big leaves, almost whenever. And this huge cascade in the back, that's a Rectifolia Mark Rubinitz my Marginata. That's a cross I made years ago, and we've sold here for years. It's a nice one. I think this is species Huatil, which I don't think is a species, probably a hybrid that's very pretty. And let's see, what is that guy? That's uh, I think Morningsis A by Ignata Redleaf. We've been selling those two time to time. Anyways, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. There's a few holes. You can see these living walls don't last forever. It's starting to get a little crusty. And although they're really fun to set up, you should expect, like I said, probably redo this every few years. We've had this, I think we did this like five or six years ago. Daniela and Kate put it together. So it's been holding together really well, but it's about time. 
I hope you enjoyed checking out these paintings as much as I always do. It's the first thing I look at every time I come in uh, to the nursery. Almost everybody, every employee, when we come in, we stop and we admire what's going on in here. Um, and we'll do another follow-up. Maybe we'll do a video when we pull it all apart and show what the next step is once you've gotten yourself in so deep with pain fever. <laughs>